Hello and welcome to the next lecture in the uh, Technology and Engineering Design course. I know down here it says Foundations of Technology. Remember from one of the prior videos, we will see this uh, used a lot. Don't worry about it. It does mean it does mean the same thing. So, what's our big what's our big lesson now? Technological in inventions and innovations. So. Uh, in this next section that we're really working on that we technically we started yesterday was uh, the idea of that some of this stuff is going to be an evolutionary process. Okay. Inventions and, and innovations are the result of an evolutionary process through a series of improvements and, refine, and refinements. Think of almost any modern technology that we have today and think about when it originally came out. Uh, so some examples I can think of are the automobile, the computer, and the cell phone. All three of those, if you look at the first kind of documented invention, are completely different today than they were when they originally came out. The very first digital computer, uh, even before we would say the word digital, um, but the very first computer, they took up entire rooms. And they were actually built off of mechanical switches, not not the digital not the digital systems that we have now. So um, they look a lot different, but they also didn't just change overnight. They they slowly now sometimes they had significant changes within it. Uh, for example, when computers went from mechanical switches to being able to have digital switches, uh, that was pretty big, and it was considered revolutionary. But it still did not jump from these computers that were the size of a, an entire room into something that can fit into our pocket just in one step. It was a s series of sequential steps that eventually brought them to where they are today. Which that gets into this point. Most technological development has been evolutionary, the result of a series of refinements and basic invent, uh, invention. And so we do want to distinguish what is the difference between an invention and an innovation. Inventions are developing new useful process, tool, machine, etc. that did not exist. So the laptop is not an invention, but the computer was. Because there was no such thing as a computer before the computer. Now we can argue that one depending on how you want to define a computer, but just for this sake, the computer was the first computer and the laptop came after a series of modifications to the computer that then allowed for it to be something that could be transported operate on its own power source and so on there were portable computers that looked very similar to the laptop but they did not have their own power source you had to carry them from one place to another and then plug them in an innovation is introducing new ideas, methods to an established process, tool, machine, etc., to produce marketable products. So the laptop is actually an innovation. It took the invention, which was the computer, and then based off of a series of refinements, turned it into its own kind of new product to that could be sold and a marketable product, but it itself was not an invention, it was an innovation. So make sure that you pay attention to those definitions. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the patent patents. A, a patent is a property right granted by the government that allows the inventor to prohibit others from making, using, or selling their idea. So uh, it, it's what you get to keep people from stealing your stuff. Patents are granted for a new, non-obvious and useful process, machine, or article of manufacture, as well as composition, matter, or improvements to any of the above. So uh, this non-obvious, we're going to see this again here in just a second. All inventions must be novel, non-obvious, and adequately described. So first thing, what do we mean by non-obvious? Uh, so an example of non-obvious would be I cannot patent the air that's it's you know that is something that you cannot patent because for one I don't really have any kind of rights over it and it's just this you know it is what it is and so there's there's no ingenuity there's no creativity 
it just it is just there. Um, there's been some arguments on the idea of patenting uh, plants, especially with you know the evolution of GMOs and things like that. But that kind of gets into some more very specific elements of patents that go beyond this class. Um, and the other one is they have to be adequately described. I remember seeing a TV show where this guy is like, hey, I have this idea for 3D glasses that can take any 2D screen and then make it in the 3D. And, but then he had no idea how to do it. Well, he could not patent that invention because that's just a, it's, it is just an idea that cannot be adequately described. Uh, and so, so you have to be able to tell more about how you're going to be able to do something in order to patent it. In the United States, uh, the America Invents Act of, of 2011 changed the way in which patent rights are assigned. So if you filed a patent before March 16th of 2013, a first to invent rule was applied, meaning the patent rights were gan uh, granted to the first person who documents the idea and works diligently to create a working model. I'm going to explain this one after we go through what happens after March 16th. So for, pay, uh, for patents filed after March 16th, 2013, a first, to, a first inventor to file rule was used. This means that the patent rights were granted to the first person who files for a patent on an idea rather than the person who documents the idea first. So what happened was, let's say two people um, get the idea for something and I don't know, we'll just, we'll just call it, uh, you know, car, a, some kind of a car invention. Um, Prior to March 16th, 2013, the person who could get the first physical uh, prototype would be the person who was awarded the, the patent. Uh, but this was, this was changed in 2013 because there's a lot of people who have really good ideas, but they don't have access to the technology necessarily to be able to make these devices or... Um, you know, this also keeps companies from stealing the ideas of the employees. So they rewrote the patent rule so that the first inventor to file uh, is used. So in that same case with the car, the, the person who has the idea first on, on, on how to patent something for a car, they go, they apply for the patent, they're able to, uh, they're able to dem uh, demonstrate on paper how this would work. They would receive the patent so they don't have to go and try and scrounge up the money to build the first prototype before they have the patent. Before the uh, before 2013 you would have to get the money to build the prototype before you could ever get the patent. And so that's uh, that's what this um, has changed. We have two different types uh, we have two different types of patents. So documenting the idea is as important as, in, uh, as filing the patent. So when you get the idea, you need to write down everything, even before, because you know, part of getting the patent is that you have to have that information to back it up. A provisional patent, which establishes the file date of the patent, can be made with minimal documentation. So this is, so say, the guy who wanted to invent the 3D glasses. He didn't. He wouldn't have to have a an extreme amount of of uh, you know information as to how to make them. Not to get the provisional patent, but then we move into the non-provisional patent, uh, which starts the examination examination and process. Uh, it requires extensive documentation. So the guy in the example of 3D glasses, he might have been able to get away with the provisional patent, but he would never be able to get past the non-provisional patent. And so then the full patent, you know, the, uh, the full protection of the patent would never be awarded. So docu documentation should include dated sketches and explanations on how the invention operates and all the pertinent information, et cetera, et cetera. That's an engineering design journal. So then for those of you who saw the document that I gave that first week of school, 
where it was 12 pages, I think. And you never even really got into the testing until we were like nine pages in. Well, that those first eight pages would all be the documentation, your engineering journal. So let's take a look at an example. The invention of the automobile. So 1672, Ferdinand, you're gonna, I'm, I'm not even gonna try on a lot of these names, but Ferdinand developed a scale model of a steam-powered car. Um, does that mean that he invented the automobile? No, not necessarily. In 1769, Nicholas built a steam-powered tricycle and was widely credited with building the first full-scale self-propelled vehicle. He still kind of is that an automobile. Mm, depends on how you would define it. And so, but we kind of don't, you know, most, for the most part, we say no. That would be a motorized tricycle, not what we call automobiles, not by today's standards. In 1807, this person created the world's first internal combustion engine, which was placed on a boat. So, as you're thinking in terms of an automobile, which I'm just going to say car, but when I say car, I don't mean like that, you know, that it has to be a, a car, it could be a truck, it could be, you know, just any, an SUV, it could be any of these vehicles. So, um, here was a, a good idea for what a car should be. Then, as technology progresses, now we get a vehicle that was powered beyond, uh, you know, beyond human power or some kind of animal power. Then we got the first combustion engine, which was a major piece. Uh, you, you know, cars run, except for electrical, electric cars, cars run on internal combustion engines. But we still don't have a car. We still don't have a car yet. Then in 1879, Carl Benz used an internal combustion engine to power a vehicle and was awarded the patent for the concept. So Carl's ben Carl Benz is widely credited with inventing the first modern automobile and that modern there kind of carries a, a uh, certain meaning. The, so if you go all the way back, 1672, the idea behind a car was already there, but the patent was never awarded until 1879. So, you know, there, there's a lot of things that have to, that go into this. Uh, first, you, know, you do have to be able to produce the reasonable documentation and examples in order to get the patent. Um, also, notice the evolution of it. It took, what? 300, almost 300 years to go from the idea, the idea of a car and then invention after invention after invention and refinement after refinement after refinement finally led to a car, a first modern uh, automobile. And then, and, but then look, look at the, the manufacturing process of the Benz, you know, in uh, from from 88 to 93, that's five years. They produced 25 vehicles, so that, that's five vehicles per year that they were able to build. So now we get into kind of the, the, the next part. So the car was the invention, and in five years, in five years, they built 25 cars. Now in 18, uh, and we look at 1821. Uh, Thomas piloted an assembly line style of manufacturing that employed interchangeable parts. So manufacturing had been around for a long time, but now we're, instead of everything being custom made, you can manufacture having things built that can be swapped out with other similar, other similar uh, uh, units. 1902 uh, Ransom Olds debuted a large-scale production line uh, to manufacture affordable automobiles. So the, we, the car has been invented. Now we're talking about manufacturing them. And he, he did that based off of Blanchard's work. So Olds took something from Thomas Blanchard 
and then modify it and improved it. That's innovation. That is not invention. That is innovation. And then in 1914, Henry Ford greatly enhanced this concept of the assembly line. Uh, he turned it into the moving assembly line, which is what we know today. So instead of people having to move around to from station to station to, to work on the, the cars, the cars themselves moved and the people could stay stationary. So again, this is innovation. Henry Ford did not invent the assembly line. He took an old version of the assembly line, which can be dated, you know, really even before 1821, and modified it, modified it, and, you know, these people all modified the different assembly line. So Ford employed many innovative practices in the workplace. So, and we use the term innovative here because safety, safety is not new. It's been around but they were able to make it more safe through innovation. Each worker was assigned a specific task, so that reduces safety concerns. The less you have to think about while you're working, the better you're going to be at that job, and the less likely you are to make mistakes, which could result in things like injury. Efficiency. The assembly line forced workers to keep a certain pace with repetitive motion, uh, motions, and that increased the efficiency and output. Again, if you're not having to do multiple things, you really are only told to do one thing, you can do a lot more of that one thing than, than you can you know, uh, if you were to split that energy into multiple things. And then wages, you know, the workers were paid well. Uh, this definitely goes back into the days where, um, you, you know, if you were not the boss, you did not get paid well at all. And this was something that came as a result of uh, the from the invention of the automobile and then through innovative practices ended up in increasing wages. So this was this was really two parts uh, this was really two parts of one example which is all about the invention of the car and the invention and innovation that comes from the car. How does this example support the statement that most technological development has been evolutionary? Uh, I've gone, I went over that, you know, it was just from the original first concept back in the 1600s uh, and, until now, it, it, it didn't just jump into modern day. It was a series of improvements and refinements uh, in a kind of a step-by-step -step process. You can trace it all the way back to its beginning. Um, what was the basic invention that has mo evolved into the modern automobile? Now, we can argue this one back and forth just, just a little bit, but I'm going to go with the, that first steam-powered model uh, was the, because that was the concept that kind of eventually spawned off all of these others. What is the future of automobile innovation? Now, that one is one that there's not necessarily going to be a, a, single, a single good answer. I can tell you where I think it's going to go. Um, but, you know, I'm just as likely to be wrong. And if you ever want to understand what it's like to try and predict the future of technology, the future of invention, innovation, just go, you might be able to find some in the old libraries, but go find issues of popular science from, from 10, 20 years ago, because they, popular science was a magazine that they love to deal with the upcoming and emerging technologies. And you'll see that some of it is right. You know, some of it, some of it ended up being perfect. And then there's other elements of it that were just way, way off and never would happen. Uh, so I will leave that question to you.